Hello, this is Stefan Narek from Conductor, and welcome to this video on learning the Kafka fundamentals. So now that we have set up Conductor and we have set up Apache Kafka, it is time for us to get familiar with the different Kafka concepts and practice them with Conductor. So let's start by learning topics, partitions, and offsets. So in Kafka, we have topics. And topics represent a particular stream of data. So a Kafka topic is going to be pretty similar to what a table is in a database without all the constraints. So if you have many tables in a database, you will have many topics in Apache Kafka. You can have as many topics as you want in Apache Kafka. And the way to identify a topic is by its name. So when you name a topic, it will, it will need to have a unique name. Now, a Kafka topic is a concept, and so topics are split in partitions. So when you create a Kafka topic, as we'll see in the hands-on, we will have to specify how many partitions we want for our Kafka topics. And each partition is going to be a stream of data as well, and each partition will have the data, the data in it being ordered. And each message within a partition will get an incremental ID, which is the position of the message in the partition, and that specific ID is called a offset. So you have to remember that in Kafka, we talk about topics, we talk about partitions, and we talk about offsets. So if we take this example of a Kafka topic with three partitions, then if we look at partition zero, it will have the message with offset zero, then the message with offset one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera, maybe all the way up to 11. And then the next message to be written is going to be message number 12, offset number 12, okay? And then partition one is also part of our Kafka topic, okay? And this one has also offsets going from zero all the way to seven. And then the next message to be written is number eight. And partition two has messages offsets going from zero all the way to nine. And the next message to be written is number 10. So as we can see in this example, the partitions are independent, okay? We will be writing to each partition independently at its own speed. So the offsets in each partition are independent. And again, a message has a coordinate of a topic name, a partition ID, and an offset. So what can go into a topic is the question that I usually get at this time. So let's go through an example where we have trucks and the trucks are on the road. So we have a fleet of trucks and we're a truck company. And what we want to do is to have the truck position in Kafka. Why? Because maybe we have many applications who need that stream of truck positions for maybe a dashboard or some alerting or so on. So we're going to create in Kafka a topic and name that one trucks underscore GPS. And the naming is free, right? But just we just chose to call it trucks underscore GPS. And that topic will contain the position of all the trucks in real time. And so what we'll do is that each truck is going to send to Kafka, maybe every 20 seconds, their position. And their position will be included as part of a message. And each message will contain the truck ID so we can know where which truck the position belongs to, as well as the truck position itself. For example, the latitude and longitude. But we could choose to add more data, obviously, to that message. We can add the speed. We can add the weight of the truck. We can add for how many hours it's been on and so on. Okay? And so we choose to create a topic with 10 partitions. And 10 partition is an arbitrary number, but in Kafka, the more partitions you have, the more throughput can go through your topic. So this is something you have to do as part of testing and capacity planning. Okay, so from there, maybe consumer applications are going to be a location dashboard for a mobile application or a notification service in case, for example, a truck hasn't been moving for more than 10 minutes, maybe it's broken, or maybe a truck has arrived to its destination and we want to send a notification to wherever it has arrived. So let's go back to our topics, our partitions, and our offsets. So we go through the same example. And as I said, if we look at the offsets in here, they only have a meaning for a specific R partition. So offset number three in partition zero does not represent the same data or the same message as offset number three in partition one. Also, if we look at ordering of messages, well, the order is going to be guaranteed only from within a partition. So for partition zero, we know that message number three is going to happen after number two, which is going to happen after number one, and so on, right? But across partitions, we have no ordering guarantee. So this is a very important subtlety of, of Kafka, is that you're going to have ordering at the partition level only. Now, data in Kafka, by default, 
is kept only for a limited amount of time, and the default is one week. That means that after one week, the data is going to be erased from a partition. And this allows Kafka to keep on renewing its disk and to make sure it doesn't uh, run out of disk, okay, space, and to ensure that we just stream the latest data. So it is possible as well for you to set up Kafka, such as Kafka will have all the data forever. In that case, you need to make sure that you have a big enough disk and that you monitor the usage of the data on your uh, Kafka cluster. Now, Kafka is immutable. So once the data is written into a partition, it cannot be changed. So if you write the message number three in partition zero, you cannot overwrite it if you did a mistake, okay? It is written, it is immutable. And so as such, you want to be careful about the kind of data you send to a Kafka topic and your recovery mechanism instead in case you send bad data. Also, if you don't provide a key, and we'll see this about keys and producers and so on, if you don't provide a key to your message, then when you send a message to a Kafka topic, the data is going to be assigned to a random partition. Finally, a topic can have as many partitions as you want, uh, but it is, not, it is common to have topics with, say, 10, 20, 30 partitions, over 100 maybe, over 1,000, I don't think so, unless you have a truly high throughput um, topic. Okay, so finally, I just want to touch upon topic naming conventions. So as I said, topic and naming is a free-for-all, so you can do whatever you want. But once you go into production with Kafka, you need to enforce guidelines internally to ease management of your cluster. So you're free to come up with your own guidelines, and there is a cool Medium post that I really like that I'm going to uh, do a short uh, summary of in the next slide that you should read just to give you some ideas. So from this Medium post, how to paint a bike shade Kafka topic naming conventions, it recommends to name your topics message type dot dataset name dot data name. And again, you're free to come up with your own topic naming convention. It is really free for you to do so in Kafka. So message type could be logging, uh, queuing, tracking, ETLDB, whatever you want, whatever is a way for you get to categorize your data, streaming, push, user, these kind of things could be how to say what data is inside your topic. The dataset name is going to be pretty similar to how you name your tables in your databases. It's a category to group topics together. And then the data name itself is going to be similar to the table name in the database. So it's fine to include more dots and more uh, notation to impose your own hierarchy within the data set namespace. And then finally, for making things feel simple, uh, this blog recommends you to use snake case, so all lowercase and with an underscore, okay? So that's it for this lecture on topic naming convention. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next lecture to start practicing topics with Conductor.